Hey guys, welcome back to Hellstone Wargaming, welcome back to the channel, um, otherwise, if not, welcome to the channel if you are new. Uh, today we are going to be reviewing the Caradron Overlords Order Battle Tome for Warhammer Age of Sigma. Uh, if you're new, then thank you very much for tuning in. If you are regular, then you'll realise that this isn't a usual content for us. Um, we've been wanting to do Age of Sigma for quite a while. And uh, I want to say a massive thank you to Games Workshop for sending us this book as a kind of like a kickstart to start uh, Age of Sigma content uh, going into 2020. So thank you very much to those guys. Again, uh, we, we're really lucky to have, be able to read these books nice daily and tell you all about them. Um, obviously, if you're watching this on release day, then you'll know that we also, the Disciples of Zinch has also been released today. Um, and we've already done a review on that one. So if you could, go and check that out as well if you are interested. Um, this is a really fantastic book. It's a much better update compared to the old one. It's a real. I think it's quite strong, and overall, it's a really nice book. But this one, we're today going to be looking at the Caradron Overlords book, and um, I think this is a really cool book. Um, it's really, really nice. Um, it's obviously for order. Um, Caradron Overlords, whilst being an awesome faction, I haven't been super popular in the meta as far as I'm aware. I'm not an Age of Sigma competitive player, but I can talk about what I think is cool and you guys can tell me more about it in the comments. But from my understanding, uh, Caradron Overlords haven't been super, super popular uh, in the meta because of the fact that a lot of the units don't really work very well in Age of Sigma. Um, but from first from first uh, viewing, first reading, this seems to be like a brand new a brand new book essentially. This is a massive overhaul from the original faction. Um, the, uh, the way the frigates and the sky, uh, the ironclads work, the sky vessels work is a, a lot different. So uh, I'm going to treat this as, as if it was a new book. Um, there's not going to be much comparison to the old stuff because a lot of it's just it's been rewritten. So um, yeah. So without further ado, let's go into uh, the Caradron Overlords. So to start off, um, again, like many other battle terms, it's put together very similarly, similarly uh, than, than the other ones. So we have how the Caradrons, uh, Caradrons are, like how they function, how their how their army or their their um, race is put together, and then we have some nice pictures of them, some nice models, and we have a little bit of a tutorial about how to paint them and how to paint their different sub factions. Uh, I believe that. Uh, the Caradrons were the first faction to get sub-factions, but obviously they are still here and they work a little bit differently. Uh, and then it goes into the different rules and stuff, so you've got your legions, abilities, battle traits, etc. So, we're going to have a quick look. Um, I haven't managed to read this one as in-depth as I did the Zinch one, um, but it does go over a little bit about how they're put together, where they came about and what they're up to these days, and how the different... Um, uh, what do they call them now? They call them the codes. So the different codes are put together. Who's in charge of them? What that what they like to do? So essentially, you have the Caradrons. They all they all follow the code. They're basically sky pirates. So they they follow the code, but it's merely guidelines because they take it their own way and they do their own thing. So they kind of like well, we're kind of following the rules, but we're just bending them ever so slightly. But what I do know is that with the other war, they are uh, fighting Zinch. Uh, they're uh, fighting Zinch quite a lot because they're uh, basically they think there's some hearty loot that they want to go and capture, and um, the Zinch are trying to stop them taking it from them. So a bit about Skyports, about uh, how they make the money. Um, you know, like the, you got the different Skyports. So you got Barrack Canal, which is the capital, um, and how many, how much gold and shares is there and stuff like that. So. Uh, again, a really cool book. Uh, this is a bit of the history about how they fit into the Age of Chaos, the Age of Myth, the Age of Sigmar and stuff. Uh, again, I won't go too much into it because I haven't managed to properly read all of it, so I don't want to talk too much about rubbish I don't know. But then it goes into the different units. So you got your Log Magnate Brock Grunkson, which is one of your top boys. you got your, your Admirals, your Endrin Masters, your Aether Ake Navigators, and your Chemists as well. And then it goes into your Ironclad, so these are your, um, your Sky Riggers and stuff like that. Uh, again, a beautiful, beautiful book. Absolutely fantastic artwork. Um, I really, really like it. Uh, but I haven't had a chance to read it, as I said. So that that picture is absolutely fantastic. I love it. So the fighting corn there. And then you've got some nice pictures uh, of all the different models um, and different uh, iron, different sky ports that are painted in. So this is your classic scheme, the purple and silver, which is really nice. Uh, Tank's more of the expert of... Uh, uh, overlords and all things dwarf than I am. So then you got your Grun Grunstock gun hauler. So again, these have changed how they work in the game. You got your frigate, and then you got your big ironclad next. Um, these have changed. I think these are actually going to be quite formidable now. The issue has always been that the big, massive flying gunships 
and then little spears stab them and, and wound them on the 3+, plus and then they just fail all their arm saves. Um, there you go, that's what a typical army might look like in terms of the lore. Not, maybe not the comp most competitive army, but there you go. Uh, then it shows you about how to paint them, so you how to do little scratches, uh, how to do the freehand, uh, the portholes, uh, etc. Like how do you do it with technical paint? So you got like traditional way and then tr technical paint way, which is pretty cool. And then you got how to paint three of the uh, six sky ports. So you got Barrack Nar, Barrack Zilfin, Barrack Zon, and it gives you like step by step, which is really nice. And then you got Barrack Urbaz, Barrack Morna, and Barrack Thring. I think maybe all these made up words. <laughs> uh, shows you how to do a kit bash for Arcanor Admiral. Uh, paints you, tells you how to paint the artifacts. It tells you about sub assemblies, which I think is really cool. Um, obviously, like normally, what they do is they say build your models and then paint them, and then this is like gives you proper sub assemblies, and then it gives you different basing options as well. So, and then the bit that everybody cares about, we have the rules of the Caradrons. So again, this is like been a complete overhaul, um, and there's quite quite a lot going on. Um, as you saw, like if you watch the Disciples of Zinch um, review, they've got like how they can summon and stuff like that. So they've taken what they already had and then just like added loads to it. So. So you've got battle traits, command traits, artifacts of power, great engine works, which is essentially you get to upgrade your sky vessels before the game starts, which is pretty cool. And then it shows you the six sky ports, so the six sub-factions or chapter tactics if you're a 40k player. Um, and then it goes into war scrolls and etc, etc. So, allegiance abilities. We start with the sky ports, which are your sub-factions. So if your army is a carriage and overlord's army, you can give it a sky port keyword from the list below instead of picking an article, amendment and footnote for your army. So there, that goes into a little bit a little bit further in a minute. Uh, all carriage and overlord units in your army gain that keyword and you must use extra abilities list of that sky port on the page indicated. So you have Barak Nar, Barak Zilfin, Zon, Urbaz, Mornar and Thring. I'm not going to say Barak every time. <laughs> if a model already has a Skyport keyword on his war scroll, it cannot gain another one. This does not preclude you from cleaning this unit in your army. So essentially if you if you if you've got a dude who's like from a specific Skyport, you can still have him in your army, even if you're not using that Skyport. I just presume they won't be able to use the same rules because they'll have different keywords. So then they have Ether Gold. So each Caradron Overlord's hero, each Sky Vessel, and each Caradron Overlord's unit with 10 or more models starts with battle with one share of Ether Gold. Um, so but essentially you use these to buy a little upgrade for yourself, a little triumph. So once per phase, you can say that one unit from your army that has any shares of Ether Gold or Ether Gold will spend one one of them. If you do so, subtract one unit, one from the unit's char bravery characteristic for the rest of the battle, but you can pick a triumph that is immediately eligible to use and immediately apply its effect to that unit. Ignore any restrictions on a triumph that they can only be used once a battle if you pay to use it with a share of Ether Gold. So essentially you pay for a little uh, triumph and they're the three that you can find in the core rules. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, again, it's it battle. It lasts uh, for the, that phase, I believe. Oh, I think it actually it lasts for the rest of the battle. Sorry. So you get like a little free upgrade, and they all start with Ether Gold. There's ways of giving units Ether Gold back, so they can give themselves two, for example. Um, and I think that's like a nice little buff uh, that they've got. And then they have stick to the code. So if you're using a particular sky port, then you can't pick these. They have preset ones. But this is, uh, you have an article, an amendment, and a footnote. So these are like little, uh, the, the code itself. Um, and they, they have to follow this. But it's basically a free uh, buff to army-wide. So when you choose a Caradron Overlord's army, you can pick one article, one amendment, and one footnote for your army from the tables below. Or you can roll it, which no one will ever do. <laughs> So on the article table, you have uh, there's three choices. You have honor is everything. Uh, you can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly Caradron Overlords heroes that target a hero or monster. And then you have master of the skies. You can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly sky vessels that target a unit that can fly. Essentially anti air anti air choice. Or settle the grudges. After the armies are set up, but before the first battle rounds begin, pick one enemy unit. You can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly carriage on overlords units that target that unit. So that's pretty cool. So you can, if they've got a particularly scary unit like I don't know, a big monster or Nagash or some or Archeon, you can go. My entire army is going to reroll hit rolls of one against that dude because I don't like him. <laughs> Uh, then you've got the amendment tables. This is the, the central part. So you have uh, always take what you are owed. Pick up to D3 different carriage on overlord units from your army. Each of those units starts the battle with one share of other gold in addition to any they normally receive. So there you go. So if you take that, you can have two shares of other gold so you can get buff yourself twice with those triumphs. 
Then you have Prosecute Wars with All Haste. In your first turn, friendly carriage and overlords can run and still shoot later in that turn. So that just makes your army super fast. Again, being able to run and then shoot, which is pretty cool. And then trust to your guns. Add one to the bravery characteristics of friendly carriage and overlord units while they are more than three inches away from any enemy units, which is pretty good. So stand back and shoot. And then you have the footnote table. Uh, there's no risk without re <laughs> there's no reward without risk. Once per battle, you can reroll a charge roll for a friendly carriage or an overlord unit. Pretty cheeky um, buff. Uh, there's no trading with some people. Once per battle, a friendly carriage or an overlord unit that has run out and or retreated in the same turn can still shoot and or charge. So that's pretty cool. Um, again, just giving you that flexibility so people can't like tie you down or tag you so you can't shoot. You can just be like, oh, I'm just going to do it anyway. And then I'm going to charge back in and hit you again. And then without our ships, we are not. Once per battle, you can heal up to D3 wounds allocated to a friendly sky vessel. So there you go, keep your sky vessel in the air. So then we have command traits. So there are four tables. We have uh, Lords of the Sky Fleet, so Arcanaut Admirals, uh, Senior Endrineers, <laughs> Uh, which are for engine masters, you have readers of the guiding wings, which are for navigators, and then you have alchemi alchemical innovators, which are for chemists. So there's six uh, for each one. Uh, a lot of them are shared across. So you have wealthy, tough as old boots, and grudge bearer, which are the first three on here. Um, uh, engine masters also have them. Readers of the guiding wings have two of those, wealthy and tough as old boots, and then uh, the chemists have the first three. So we'll go through those first three, um, from, we'll go through Lords of the Sky Fleet first. So they have six command traits. We have wealthy, so the general starts with two shares of other gold instead of one, so they can get two triumphs for themselves. And they have tough as old boots, uh, you can add two to the general's wound characteristic, and grudge bearer. So after armies are set up, pick one enemy hero, double the damage inflicted by weapons used by this general that target that hero. So you over there, die. <laughs> So then, for the three more unique ones for Lords of the Sky Fleets, so they have Cunning Fleet Master. After armies are set up, but before, before the first battle round begins, you can make a normal move with one friendly Sky Vessel. It can fly high unless it is an Arcanaut Ironclad. So the frigates, the well, the Sky Vessels, so the frigates, the gun haulers, and the uh, Ironclads have a new, well, they have two new abilities, or three new abilities, I believe. They can basically transport units. Um, they can pull out of combat and still shoot, but they also have a, a rule called fly high, where you, essentially what you do, instead of moving as normal, you remove them from the battlefield and redeploy them uh, more than nine inches away from enemy units, which is pretty cool. So that makes them super, super fast uh, in terms of being able to flip around the board absolutely any way you like. So what this does, it lets you make a normal move or you can redeploy, which is pretty cool. Uh, then you have war wound, uh, roll a dice. Uh, for this general in your hero phase, on a 1, subtract 1 from hit rolls for this general into your next hero phase. On a 2+, plus, you w receive 1 command point. So pretty cheeky, get those extra command points, So because obviously you're, you're only getting 1 per phase, um, you might use them quite quickly because there's a lot of command traits, so being able to get a couple extra is going to be really, really, really convenient. Uh, a scholar and an archonaut, uh, so number six, you can pick an extra footnote for your army. You cannot pick a footnote for your army, your army already has. So you can basically take two of the original battle traits, which would be quite nice. So you can take you could take like the, the heal one as well as um, these, uh, let's say, let, uh, re-roll a single charge roll, which is quite nice. Um, so, that, so that is archonaut admirals. So senior engineers, uh, so they have wealthy, tough as old boots and grudge bearer. So they have the first same three. And then we have Grand Master. Uh, when you use this General's Endrin Master ability, add one to the number of wounds that ability heals. So that's the, for that particular data sheet, they add one to the number of wounds. I believe they naturally wound heal three, but we can double check that. Uh, the Great Tinkerer, add two to the attack characteristics of this General's Gaze of Grung Grungni weapon. Um, and then Endrin Professor, once in each of your hero phases, this General can use the By Grungni, I, I, I have my eye on you command ability without a command point being spent. Apologise for falling over my words, but essentially you get to use the command ability f for free every phase, every hero phase, sorry, uh, without spending those command points. So then we have the navigators um, command traits. So they again, they have wealthy and tough as old boots. However, they have storm caller as, as a unique one. Um, so they have when this general uses their other storm ability, you can reroll the dice that determines what effect it has on the enemy unit, which is pretty cool. Just make sure you get the ability you actually want to use. Ride the Winds, which is add three inches to a move characteristic of a sky vessel that has this general in its garrison. So basically in its garrison, it basically transports units. 
Um, so whilst he's like, aboard the Sky Vessel, it adds three to its movement characteristic. Uh, then they have Skeptic, add one to Dispelling and Unbinding Rolls for this General, and then Diviner. So after armies are set up, pick one terrain feature or objective. Do not take Battleshot tests for friendly carriage on Overlord units while they are wholly within 12 inches of that terrain feature or objective. So that's really good if you want to, like, if there's an, a particular objective you need, um, you can, like, make your army fearless so they don't run away from it, which is pretty cool. Um, so then uh, the for the chemists, the alchemical innovators, you have wealthy, tough as old boots and grudge bearer, but then you also have a nose for gold. Uh, roll the dice for this general in your hero phase on a five plus they gain one share of other gold. So basically it just makes them hoard that gold even more. Then you have genius in the making. Um, the range of this general's adamatic augmentation ability is 18 inches instead of 12. And then Collector, if you choose this general to have an artifact of power, you can choose one extra friendly hero to have an artifact of power. So that's pretty cool. There's not an, an innate ability, but I mean, when you're taking sky ports where they lock you into a particular um, uh, artifact, then you can have an extra one. Take a War Scroll Battalion, you're getting two extra for free there, which is pretty cool. Speaking of artifacts of power, we will go into those now. So we have quite a few uh, to go through. Um, I see there's 18. So you have six for the Arcanaut Admirals, which are the perks of rank. So they, for, for number one, they have Master Raw Armor. Roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to the bearer. On a six, you ignore that wound. So it's basically six up, ignore damage. Um, Hammer of Atheritic Might. Uh, pick one of the bearer's melee weapons. If an unmodified hit roll for an attack made with that weapon is a six, that attack inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to normal damage. So that's pretty cool, just a little bit of extra damage for his big hammer or something like that. Uh, Gatelson's Endless Repeater, add two to the character attack characteristics of the vol uh, bearer's volley pistol, so basically shoots super fast. <laughs> uh, Ruin of Mark, after armies are set up, pick one enemy, enemy hero. If that hero is slain, before the model is removed, you can play, uh, from play, you can give one share of other gold to each of three closest Karajan Overlord units to, your, to that hero. Uh, so that's pretty cool, so basically uh, when you kill a hero, you pick three other units and they get other gold, so you can basically get some extra triumphs on three of the units, which are cool. And then they have the Flask of vin Vintage Amber Whiskey. Ooh, this rare Duarduin drink is said to be good for whatever ails you. <laughs> um, yeah, just get drunk and forget about it, that's what he's saying. <laughs> Once for battle in your hero phase, you can either heal up to D6 wounds allocated to the bearer, or heal up to two wounds allocated to the bearer. That's pretty cool, so you basically take you can take two wounds if you want to, you can take the risk and roll a D6 and go for it. Uh, Proclamator, Mask Hailer. Uh, once for battle, this general can use a command ability on their war scroll without a command point being spent. So that's pretty good. Again, saving command points, you've got ways of generating more command points, you can use them for other stuff, such as uh, Insane Bravery and stuff like that. So what I found, what I'm seeing is the um, Overlords are really good at managing resources that are outside the game, so you've got command points, your other gold and stuff like that. So really good at managing and basically making sure they always have those to use, which is pretty cool. So then you have Athematic Instruments for the Navigators. So you have the Cyclonic Athometer. <laughs> so I apologize. Uh, when you use this barrier, bearer's other storm ability, add one to the dice roll that determines its effect. So that'd be pretty good matched up with his command ability where you can re-roll it. Um, the Storm Caller, so then you can add one and re-roll it, which would be pretty cool. And then you have, oh God, Savareg Stein Illuminator Flare Pistol. Um, <laughs> which is a pistol that lights up its mark. Uh, the first time in battle that this bearer's ranging pistol scores a hit on an enemy unit, you can reroll hit rolls for attacks made by other friendly carriage and overlord units that target that enemy unit in the same phase. So it's only once per battle, um, but you can reroll all hit rolls, which is pretty cool uh, for any attacks, shooting or melee. Then they have the Void Stone Orb. Once per battle, when you use the bearer's other sight ability, you can say that the bearer will use their Void Stone Orb. If you do so, the Dispelling or Unbinding roll for that use of the ability is automatically successful, so you don't need to roll the dice. So automatic Dispelling, basically, which is pretty cool. Um, then you have the Ingenious Gadgets for Endrin Masters. Um, so they have uh, two sets of three. Yeah, the first three are for the one Endrin Masters with Endrin Harness, and the other two are for Endrin Master in Dirigible Suit, which is the new dude in Everwar box set. So for the first three with the Endrin Harness, they have the Commonculus. Uh, once per phase, you can reroll one hit roll, one rune roll for attack, one hit or wound roll for the attack made by the bearer, or reroll one save and attack that targets the bearer. You cannot use this ability to reroll more than one dice per phase, which is pretty cool. 
And then they have the Ether Quartz Monolens. So the Bearer's Gaze of Grungni has a range of 18 instead of 9. And then Seismic Shock Gauntlets. After the Bearer makes a charge move, you can pick one enemy unit within one inch of the Bearer and roll a dice. On a 2+, plus, that's enemy units of his D3 Mortal Wounds. That's pretty cool, so like slam into combat. Um, then you have the, the D3 with the Dirigible Suit. So they have Ether Injector Boosters. When the bearer retreats, they can use a disengage and fly high ability from the Grunstock Gun Hall as War Scroll. So the disengage is the pull out and still shoot, and the fly high is the movement uh, one we spoke about. So they have Phosphorate Bomblets. Once per battle, in your shooting phase, you can pick one unit within six inch of this model and roll a dice. On a two plus, that unit suffers one mortal wound and you can roll again. Keep rolling until the target is destroyed or you roll a one. That is pretty cool. I mean, it's really close range where it's just like, as long as you can keep rolling a two plus, Boom, that, that dude's dead. <laughs> uh, Miniaturize Adamatic Repulsion Field. Uh, each time the bear is affected by a spell or endless spell, you can roll a dice. If you do so on a 3+, plus, ignore the effects of that spell to the bearer. That's pretty cool. Um, gold Inventions, which are for the chemists. We have the Emergency Vent Plates. So once we battle at the start of the uh, enemy shooting phase, uh, you can say that the bearer will use the Emergency Vent Plates. If you do so, subtract one from hit rolls for attacks that target the bearer or any friendly unit wholly within six inches. So that's pretty cool. It's just like just a, like basically a smoke bomb or something like that. I mean, it is quite short range, but within six inches, wholly within six inches. So you can't get big units in there, but you know, it could be like a frigate or something like that at this point. Um, so any friendly unit. So you could have like four ironclads all together <laughs> within six inches. You just minus one to hit, which is pretty cool. Um, then you have the Caustic Anatomizer. So once per battle at the start of the combat phase, you can say that the bearer will use their Caustic Anatomizer. Apologies. Uh, if you do so, roll a dice for each enemy model within six inches for this model. For each five plus, that model's unit suffers one more wound, which is pretty cool, so it drops a little smoke bomb, uh, a, poisonous, a poison gas bomb even. And then you have Spell in a Bottle. Pick one endless spell. Any endless spell can be chosen. All restrictions are ignored, but you must pay any points required for the model. Once per battle, the, the bearer can automatically cast that endless spell. Uh, do not roll a 2d6, and it cannot be unbound. So that's pretty cool. So it's like he's captured it in a little, like a little genie in a bottle, and he pops out any endless spell that you've got, as long as you pay the points. So um, I don't think these guys are, ma are p particularly uh, versed in uh, wizardry, but there you go. If you can pop one out of a bottle, why not? <laughs> so then we have... Great Endrim works. So, if you're if a Caradron Overlord's army includes any Sky Vessels, one of those Sky Vessels can have a Great Endrim work. Disclare, declare which Sky Vessel has the Great Endrim work, and then pick which Great Endrim work table you wish to use. You can choose to roll, or you can choose or roll for a Great Endrim work from the table you pick. You can choose one extra Sky Vessel to have a Great Endrim work for each War Scroll Battalion in your army. A Sky Vessel can have, cannot have more than one Great Engine work, and an army may not include duplicates of the same Great, great Engine work. What does that mean? It basically means if you got an, um, if you got a Sky Vessel, you can upgrade it. Uh, you can you can't double up and upgrade. And if you've got for every battalion you've got, you can choose an extra one. So you have one table for Ironclads, one table for Frigate, and one table for Grunstock Gun Haulers. Um, so the, these are really cool. It's, it's like a free upgrade just for taking it, just for taking an army. And again, if you're taking War Squad Battalions, you get an extra, you usually get an extra artifact, but then you also get an, an extra an extra upgrade on one of your vessels. So I go for the Ironclad, which is the big boy if you've never played um, Overlords before. So this is the largest uh, Sky Vessel. So you have the last word. At the end of the enemy charge phase, you can pick one enemy unit that finish a charge move in that phase within three inches of this model. This model can shoot at that unit with its Great Sky Cannon, Great Sky Hook, or Great Volley Cannon, which is pretty cool. Just, just like, just absolutely nailing with the Sky Hook just as on his way in. Uh, Hexen Solutions, old reliable hull plates, so add two to the wounds characteristic, which is pretty cool. And then Ambulant Buoyancy Aid. This model can fly high and or disengage, even while it has a garrison of 16 or more models. So basically you have the fly high and disengage, if you have too many models in a particular uh, garrison of of, a, of the Sky Vessel, then they can't use Fly High, because so, essentially it's too heavy, it's a hot air balloon. So this, this lets you get around that. And then Prudence Issues. If this model is destroyed, you don't have to roll to see if any models in this garrison are slain, they all survive. So basically, if you've got any dudes uh, garrisoned and you loot the Sky Vessel's destroyed, you have to roll a dice on a 1, you lose those models. Uh, basically, if you've got 10 dudes in there, you roll 10 dice for each roll over 1, you lose 1. Um, 
so it's basically lets you get around that. So these are really cool because they obviously come with um, like a buff that they can carry stuff, but they also come with some negatives there where like, if they are on there, you can you lose these abilities. But this is like getting you, letting you get around that. So it's like you can you can carry these boys, but you can't do this. And then these are just like you can carry these boys, but you can still do this. So. So they have the Magnificent Omniscope, so add two to the model's move characteristic. And then Zomba Corp Deal Breaker Battle Ram. After this model makes a charge move, you can pick one unit within one inch and roll a number of dice equal to the charge roll for that charge move. But each roll of a four plus, the enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. So absolutely just ram in there when, when you charge. <laughs> so then you have uh, the Frigate Refitting, so this is for the frigates only. It's three. You have Magnificent Omniscope, so add two to move again. Prudence Issue, again, uh, do not roll to see if you die, if you, if it's blown up. And then you have Malefic Sky Mines. Once for battle, at the start of the combat phase, you can pick one enemy unit that can fly and is with, within six inches of this model and roll a dice. On a two to three, that enemy unit suffers D3 model wounds. On a four plus, that enemy unit suffers D6 model wounds. So really, really good in an air, air battle. So then you have a gun hauler modification. So these have three, they are all unique and they all have funny names. Uh, so you have Ingrid Kaz Surge Injection Endrin Mark IV. So when this model makes a normal move, you can add D3 uh, to that move. If you do wish, you can add two D3 to, uh, to that move instead of D3. But if you do so and you roll a double, then this model suffers one mortal wound after the move is made. So basically, um, it's any time it moves, add D3 or add two D3 and take a mortal wound if you roll a double. Then you have Zombacore Debt Settler Spa Torpedo. Once per battle, after this model makes its charge move, you can pick one enemy model within one inch of this model and roll a dice. On a two plus, it suffers D6 mortal wounds, which is pretty nasty. And then you have Colbeard's Collapsible Compartments. This model can use the flying transport ability from the Arcanaut Ironclad War Scroll. Because obviously this is just a little ship, it's just a gunship, it doesn't carry anyone, but now it does. If it does so, the maximum number of models it can garrison is 5 instead of 25, and it can all, always fly high or disengage no matter models are in its garrison. So basically, um, you give it a little bit of transport capacity, which it didn't normally have. Whew. Okay, so they are the essentially artifacts. Now we're going to talk about the Skyport. So these are the unique sub-factions that you have. Uh, there are six to choose from, as we're going to go through what they do. Um, and they, depending which one um, you choose, will give you different benefits for different types of units. So to start with, you have Barak Nar, City of the First Sunrise. Also, I believe, what, the largest city, the most common faction. Um, so they have different abilities. They have a particular code to... to, 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 to so for taking this Skyport, you get a particular ability. You have a specific Caradron code, which is the, the article, the amendment, and the footnote. And then you have a, a set command trait and a set artifact of power. So if you take these, you have to take these codes and artifacts and command traits. Uh, but obviously you gain an army-wide ability, which is pretty cool. So their ability, which is Scholars and Commanders. At the start of the first battle round, roll the dice for each friendly Barak Nar hero on the battlefield. For each four plus you receive one extra command point so that is really good i think so again they're really good at resource management just get loads and loads of command points really cool uh so then as i said if you're army if you're using this um skyport you must have this car uh, drum code uh so you have article respect your commanders you can reroll battle shot tests of friendly barrack nar units while they're wholly within a barrack nar wholly within 12 of a hero uh, a barrack nar hero I should say so so reroll battle shot tests uh, the amendment, trust Adamatics, not superstition. Each Barak Nar hero can attempt to unbind one spell in each enemy hero phase. Uh, if they can already attempt to unbind a spell, they can attempt to unbind one extra spell in each enemy hero phase, which is pretty cool. Um, and then footnote, through knowledge, power. Add one to unbinding rolls for Barak Nar heroes, which is pretty cool. So you basically, you can everyone can unbind, and also you add one to the unbinding roll, which is good. Um, and then you have the command train, so champion of progress. Do not shake, take battle shot tests of friendly Barak Nar units while they're wholly within 12. Um, so that's pretty cool. So obviously you can already, already re-roll it if you're within any hero, but if you're within, if you're within 12 of your general, you just don't take any, which is cool. Uh, the artifact of power. So the first artifact, you must take this one if you're using this um, uh, Skyport. So they have the other charged rune. Once per battle, you can change either one hit roll uh, for an attack made by the bearer or one save roll but for an attack that targets the bearer to a roll of your choice. You basically just go flip, I automatically hit, or flip, I automatically made that save, which is pretty cool. 
And being able to manipulate dice in a dice game is amazing. It's a super strong ability. I mean, it's only once per battle, but, you know, I mean, that ability itself, just being able to just ignore any damage for one turn because you decided you wanted to, which is really cool. Um, so then you have Barak Zilfin, the Windswept City. Um, so they are basically, they're all about polishing the crap out of all the sky vessels to make sure they're super shiny. <laughs> so their ability is Magnificent Sky Vessels. Funny that. <laughs> you could choose one extra sky vessel in your army to have a great entry work. So that's the, the ability, the upgrades um, to the sky vessels that we just spoke about. So then they have their code. Their article is Masters of the Sky. Uh, you can reroll hit rolls for of one for attacks made by friendly sky vessels that target a unit that can fly. So anti-air guns essentially. Then they have amendment, don't argue with the wind. In your movement phase, you can declare a friendly barrack as infilling unit will run. Do not make a run roll. Instead, add six inches of that movement characteristic for all models in that unit for that phase. So that's really cool because that's just um, any unit that can automatically run six. The footnote is there's always a breeze if you look for it. Once per battle in your hero phase, one friendly Barak Zilfin unit can make a normal move. It can run, retreat, or disengage. Uh, so that's really good. Makes those little guys faster, uh, or just makes your sky sky vessels just fly across the battlefield. Um, obviously, they can't uh, double that up with the amendment because that's only during the movement phase. But I mean, that hero phase, um, you can make a free move. So double move one turn. The command tray. Um, a Barak Zilf in general that is an Arcanor Admiral uh, must have this command trait. So I suppose you can kind of get around it if you didn't take the Arcanor Admiral as your uh, general, but there you go. You gain Master Commander. If this general is part of your army and on the battlefield, each time you can spend a command point to use on a command ability on this general's war scroll, roll a dice. On a 5+, plus, you receive one extra command point. So basically every time you use his command ability on a 5+, plus, you get to keep your command point. But then again, if you've got another ability that lets you keep it and don't, don't spend it, then obviously you, you're just getting, getting command points just for using it. Uh, the first artifact of power that you have to take is the Staff of Ocul Ocular Optimization. So pick one of the bearer's missile weapons, add one to hit rolls with the attacks made by that weapon. So pretty cheeky. So we have Barak Zon, City of the Sun. And I want to say that's really cool. I love it. So they have D's not worse. Um, add one to wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons by friendly Skyfarer units that made a charge move in the same turn. And add one to hit rolls for attacks made by melee weapons by made with melee weapons by friendly Sky Warden units that made a charge move in the same turn. Basically, it just makes them more uh, more threatening when they make a charge move for Skyfarers and Sky Wardens. Uh, again, the code they have to take is uh, the article is honor is everything. You can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by friendly Barak Zon. Um, Heroes that target a hero or monster. So they've got the two they've got too much pride to stand down to a hero or monster So they just keep stabbing him uh, The amendment is leave no Duardin behind add two to bravery characteristics to friendly skyfarer units while they're wholly within 12 inches of a friendly sky vessel So whilst you've got a ship in sight, you're all good. You don't want to run away uh, Footnote show them your steel once per battle in your hero phase, one friendly Sky Fairies unit that is part of a garrison on a Sky Vessel can leave that garrison, set that unit wholly within three inches of the Sky Vessel and more than nine inches away from enemy units. So essentially you can jump out before um, the hero, before the movement phase, which is pretty cool, because usually you can't move if you do that. So, um, And then you have the command trait. The barracks on general must have this command trait. Uh, the bearer of the Iron Star. So the first time is generally slain, before removing them, roll a dice on a 2+, plus. they are not slain. You can heal up to D3 wounds allocated to them, and any wounds remaining to be allocated to them are negated. So essentially you just stand back up, which is pretty cool, on a 2+, plus. Um, keep your general around for a little bit longer. And then the uh, artifact of power they must take first is the Etherspeed, Etherspeed Hammer. Pick one of the bearer's melee weapons, add 2 to the attack characteristics, it makes them super speedy with it. <coughs> So then we have Barak Urbaz, the Market City. Um, the Market City ability is do not subtract one for a bravery characteristic on a Barak Urbaz unit that spends a share of other gold. So essentially these are going to be, uh, they are loads of money, so they, they love spending it. <laughs> so so the other gold is basically buying the triumph for that unit, so you do not subtract one from bravery if you do that with these guys. So they code, they have these Seek New Prospects. You can reroll Battleshot tests of friendly Barak Urbaz units while they are wholly within your opponent's territory. Um, then they have always take what you are owed. Pick up to D3 different friendly Barak Urbaz units. Each of those units starts the battle with one share of other gold in addition to any that they will receive. Um, 
So you basically you can spend it spend two other gold on it, and you've still got the same bravery, which is pretty cool. And you're re-rolling battle shot tests uh, whilst you're over on the other side. Uh, and then footnote: where there's where there's war, there's gold. Once per battle and in the combat phase, one friendly Sky Fairy unit that fought in that phase gains one share of the gold. <coughs> So, a Barrack Urbaz General that is a chemist must have this command trait. Again, so if you don't take him as the, uh, the chemist as a general, you can get around this. But, uh, the chemist supreme, replace the rules for this general's other, Atheric Augmentation ability with, in your hero phase, you can pick two friendly Sky Fairies units wholly within 12 inches of this model. Until your next hero phase, you can reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made by those units. This ability cannot be used by an other chemist that is part of a garrison or 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 on a friendly unit that's part of the garrison. Because whilst you're aboard a ship, you're technically still on the battlefield, so you can still be targeted for missile weapons. Uh, so essentially saying you can't buff yourself while you're on a garrison. So then you have great engine work. The first Barak Urbaz Sky Vessel to re receive an engine work must be given the Breath of Morgrim, which is in your shooting phase, you can pick one unit and roll one dice for each model from that unit within six inches of the bearer. Each six, that unit suffers one more wound. So just like absolutely blast it uh, with some sort of breath. The prow of this sky vessel has been modified to belch forth great clouds of toxic gas. There you go. So we have Barak Morna, the city of shadow. Uh, so their ability is the fearsome raiders. Uh, so track one from bravery characteristics of any enemy units while they're within six inches of any friendly Barak Morna units. Super scary dwarves, everybody. <laughs> Um, then we have the carriage and code. So seek new prospects. You can re-roll battle shot tests for friendly barrack Morna units while they're holding within your opponent's territory. So that's the same as the other one uh, from the the, uh, the previous uh, code, which is the Urbas. Then we have prosecute wars with all haste. In your first turn, friendly barrack Morna units can run and shoot later, and they still shoot later in the turn. Um, so it makes them super fast. They're hungry for battle. Uh, and then the footnote is who strikes first strikes hardest. Once per battle, at the start of your combat phase, you can pick one friendly Barak Morna unit that is within three inches of an enemy unit. That friendly unit fights at the start of, the f start of that combat phase, but cannot fight again in that combat phase, unless their ability or spell allows it to fight more than once. Um, oh, that's interesting. A little typo there. <laughs> There's a little tiny T for them. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically just you get to strike first, even if you didn't charge. Obviously, the way Age of Sigmar combat works, that's going to be quite strong. So a, a Barak Mornar general must have this command trait, the opportunistic privateer. If this general is part of a garrison of a sky vessel that is on the battlefield um, or after armies are set up, but before the first battle round begins, you can remove that sky vessel from the battlefield and set it up again anywhere more than nine inches from any enemy units. If you do so, that sky vessel cannot make a normal move in its first battle round and units in its garrison cannot leave the garrison in the first battle round. So basically just lets you redeploy, which is cool. Um, Gale first for, for stave, um, the first navigator to take an artifact, artifact must take this. At the start of the enemy charge phase, you can pick one enemy unit within 12 inches of the bearer, half charge rolls for that unit in that phase, which is pretty cool, just like, no. <laughs> um, essentially, it's like that thing of Super Smash Brothers, it's like the, the pot of air where you're just like blowing them off the edge and it's just like just like air gusts of wind coming out of this bottle, which is pretty cool. And I realise that's really not on topic, but there you go. Uh, Barrack 3, City of the Ancestors, which is really cool, it's like a two-faced type thing. So they are incredibly stubborn, so if a friendly Skyfarer's model is slain while it is within 3 inches of an enemy unit, roll a dice. On a 4+, plus, that model could fight before it is re removed from play, so just stabs you on the way down while it's got a sword in his chest. Uh, so they have the Caradron Code, they have the, um, again you must use this one if you're taking these boys. Uh, they have the Chronicle of Grudges, after armies are set up before the first battle round begins. Um, pick up to three different enemy units. You can reroll hit rolls of one for that um, attacks made by friendly barrack thring units that target the units. So you basically just like pick three and you, you, you grudge them essentially. So then you have take help where you can get it. One in four units in your army can be a Duardin unit that does not have the Caradron Overlords keyword. Um, oh, yeah, that's interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this again. One in four units in your army can be a Duardin unit that does not have the Caradron Overlords keyword. Those units gain the Barrack Thring keyword. They cannot be your army general and do not count towards the number of battle line units in your army. So that's really good. So obviously you can ally with other Dwarf units and you can make them gain these keywords, which is pretty cool. Once for battle, is that your shooting phase? Uh, sorry, this is the footnote. Honor the gods just in case. Uh, once for battle, is that your shooting phase or combat phase? You can prick for 
pick one friendly Barak Thring unit. Until the end of that phase, unmodified hit rolls of a 6 where attacks made by that unit score 2 hits on the target instead of 1. Make a wound roll for each one. So basically, that's pretty cool. Uh, just get like exploding 6s to hit. But again, it's unmodified so it lines up with the rest of the game so you can't buff that in, in any way. But you can also can't nerf it out of existence. Um, I think unmodified is probably better for the game overall because you always get your abilities and you can't lose them. It's a shame that you can't buff them to make it like a 4 plus and get six, 2 extra hits, but there you go. Um... So the Barak Thring General must have this uh, um, command trait. When you use the incredibly stubborn ability for this general, they can fight on a roll of two plus instead of a four plus. So, which is pretty cool. Which is the first ability, so they'll always fight on a two plus when they die. Um, the artifact, the first Barak Thring Skyfair hero to receive an artifact power must be given the Grudge Hammer. Uh, pick one of the of the bearer's melee weapons. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made by that weapon. In addition, if the unmodified wound roll for an attack made by that weapon that targets an immune unit, which was picked for the Chronicle of Grudges, which is this one over here, uh, is a 6, that attack inflicts D3 mortal wounds in addition to any other damage, uh, which is pretty cool. So basically, uh, these two, the, the command chain and the artifact are related to the codes and the abilities for that particular sky pawn. <coughs> So, we've got the um, Path to Glory, we've got Battle Plans. Uh, I'm not going to go into those too much now, but if you are interested, then I can do a separate video. Let me know in the comments. Um, but we have the stuff that everyone cares about is the War Scrolls and the War Scroll Battalions. So, there are there are like four War Scrolls, uh, War Scroll Battalions, sorry, uh, for uh, the Carriage on Overlords, which is fairly low compared to the Disciples of Zinch because they have about 12, but there you go. So you have the War Scroll Battalion Grand Armada, which is the War Scroll Battalion of Battalions. So the organisation is one Arcanaut Admiral of Brock Grunson, one Iron Sky Command, one Iron Sky Attack Squadron, and one to three Grunstock Escort Wings. So this is like one, one, and then one to three of these. They have constitutional, constitutional Experts ability. So once per battle, if the Arcanaut Admiral or Brock Grungson from this battalion is on the battlefield, you can use a footnote even if it has been used uh, before in the same battle. So that's from the codes again as we went over. So you have Iron Sky Command. So this is made up of 0-1 Admiral or Brock Grungson. Grungson. <laughs> uh, you have an Arcanaut Ironclad. Three units chosen from the following list in any combination. A Chemist, a Navigator or Engine Master. Uh, you have one Arcanaut company unit and then one to three Endring, Endrigidus, Endrin Riggers units. <laughs> Man, some of these words to say are so difficult, honestly. So they have the Lords of the Skies ability. Do not shake the battle top, do not take a battle shock test for friendly carriage on overlord units while they are wholly within the 18 inch of the Arcanaut ironclad from this battalion. So essentially, while you're near the boat, you're you, you're not scared of anything. Then they have Iron Sky Attack Squadron, so it's two plus Arcanaut frigates and one Arcanaut. Arcanaut company unit for each Arcanaut frigate in the same battalion. So you can take as many frigates as you want, but they've got to have a company with them. So the ability they get is Bold Privateers. Arcanaut company units from this battalion can leave an Arcanaut frigate from the same battalion either before or after it has moved. In addition, roll 3d6 instead of 2d6 on making charge rolls for Arcanaut company units from this battalion that left an Arcanaut frigate from the same battalion in that movement phase. So essentially you can get out before it moves or after, and then you get a really, really fast charge um, because they're just absolutely screaming and running out with the gun, handguns and little knives and stuff like that. Just the the thought of them just jumping out little tiny dwarves out of a skyship and right into your face is just hilarious. So then we have the Grunstock Escort Wing. So that is two to three Grunstock Gun Haulers, which are the smallest ships. We have an Arcanaut Ironclad or Frigate, and Grunstock Thunderers unit, and then nought to three Skywarden Sky units. They gained Focused Fire. So at the start of your shooting phase, you can pick one unit from this battalion to focus fire on. If you do so, you can reroll hit rolls of one for attacks made by units from this battalion that target that unit in the same phase. That's pretty cool, just absolutely uh, annihilate one particular target. So again, not many Wall Scroll battalions, uh, only four to go over, but they all do seem kind of they do seem kind of strong, uh, in my opinion. Uh, they're definitely they're a lot more um, uh, specialised in what they do. So obviously, if you want to interact with the nail stuff in the shooting phase, and you take a Grunstock Escort Wing. If you want to, like, if you're more combat based, you want to be more upfront and bloodthirsty, and then you take something like the Iron Sky Attack Squadron. <clears throat> so then we have the War Scrolls. So, again, as far as I'm aware, a lot of these have changed, especially the Arcanaut Company. Um, there's quite a few to get through, um, but the points have also changed um, to reflect the fact that they've changed a lot of these units. 
Uh, all of the Sky Festivals have changed. They've also, I'm, in my opinion, got a lot better. But I'm sure people who play competitively will know more than I do. Because uh, I'm not a competitive player. I've played in one Age of Sigmar tournament and I won favourite player. So there you go. That's my qualification for talking about the rules. And we'll do that now. <laughs> so we have Brock Grungson, which is a Barak Nar hero. Um, so he's a named character and is a single model. He's armed with Grungson's Boast, the Magnarts Charter, Other Blasters, and the Adamatic Saw. So the Boast, he has three missile weapons the Boast, the Charter, and the Other Blasters. So the Boast is 18, two attacks, threes and twos, minus two, and d3 damage. Then we have the Charter, which is 18 inch, six attacks, threes and threes, minus one and one damage. And the Other Blasters are nine inch, two attacks, threes and fours, and just one damage. Uh, so this, I should say this is the guy with the machine guns and his little uh, moustache which is just and a top hat which is just hilarious he also has the Adamatic Saw which is range 1 inch uh, this is a melee weapon 4 attacks 3s and 2s minus 2 and d3 damage uh, he has a few abilities he has custom built dirigible suit uh, so after his model makes a charge move you can pick one enemy unit within 1 inch and roll the dice on a 2 plus that enemy unit suffers d3 mortal wounds he has a heart, the Endrin Harness, and if an unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a melee weapon by this model is a 6, that attack inflicts D3 mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends. So basically you can just get past the fact that you need, need to roll to wound, even though it's other 3s and 2s, just straight up mortal wounds, which is good. Um, he has Hitcher, a few of these, a few units have this ability, which is pretty cool. Um, if this model is hollowed within 6 in a friendly sky vessel, immediately before the sky vessel uses its fly high ability, which is the redeploy one. Um, obviously you know this means redeploy, right? <laughs> um, uh, you can say that this model will hit a lift instead of making a normal move, as long as this model has not already made a normal move in that same phase. If you do so, after that sky vessel has moved, remove this model from the battlefield and set it up again hollow within 6 inches of the sky vessel, more than 1 inches away from any terrain features or objectives, and more than 9 inches away from enemy models. No more than seven models can hitch a lift on the same sky vessel in the same turn. So not only can the sky vessels carry people, the people can also hitch onto them if they can't actually get in them. Because obviously the guys with the hot air balloons already can't get inside a hot air balloon, uh, but you can, they can grab onto it on the way, which is pretty cool. So his command ability is First Rule of Grungson. Um, you can use the command ability at the start of the charge phase if a friendly model with this command ability is on the battlefield. If you do so, pick one friendly model from this with this with this command ability. You can reroll charge rolls of friendly barrack nine units that are wholly within 24 inch of the model until the end of that phase. So it basically says everyone get into combat right now. Uh, so you can reroll charge rolls. Again, line that up with some of the battalions so you can get three to six charges. I'm just like absolutely laughing. <clears throat> So then you have the Endrin Master with a Dirigible Suit, which I believe is the new guy in Otherworld, the Otherworld box set. Um, I don't know if they'll ever be released on their own, uh, but you know he's the new dude. Uh, so he's basically similar to um, Brock Grungson, just not a named character. Um, he's a single model armed with the Ether Cannon, Dirigible Suit Weapon, Battery, Gaze of Grungni, and Athematic Saw. So the Athematic Saw is the same as the one that um, Brock has. Uh, so it's a melee weapon, threes, three attacks, threes, two, minus two, and d3 damage. Um, so he has missed three missile weapons. He has the other cannon, which is range 12, one attack, threes and twos, minus two, and d3 damage. He has the, uh, the weapon battery, which is 18 inch range, six, six attacks, threes and threes, minus one and one damage. And gaze of Grungnir, which is nine inch range, one attack, threes and twos, minus one, and d3 damage. He has the Endrin Master, so at the start of your hero phase, you can pick one from the Sky Vessel within one inch of this model and heal three wounds allocated to that Sky Vessel. So I believe one of the command traits was to add one, so it does four wounds instead of three, which is pretty cool. He has Hitcher, which is the same rule as in basically just grab onto the Sky Vessel before it moves to do the Fly High ability. And then his command ability is by Grungni, I have my eye on you. You use his command ability in your hero phase before a friendly Endringer's unit, wholly within eight inches of a friendly model with this command ability, it uses its Endring Craft ability. <laughs> if you do so, you can reroll any of the dice that determine how many wounds are healed by that end rigged unit in that phase. So this guy heals three. I believe the other guys are D3 and stuff like that. <clears throat> so we have the Arcanor Admiral, which is the guy on a rock, usually. Um, he is wound six, move four, three up save, and eight bravery. He has a volley pistol and a, a scalf hammer. So the volley pistol is nine inch range, threes and three, uh, three attacks, threes and fours, minus one on one damage. But then Scal Scalf Hammer is range one, three attacks, threes and twos, minus two, and two damage. He has quite a few abilities to go through and a big old command ability. Um, 
So his ability is, if you want a job done, dot, dot, dot. You can reroll hit rolls of, and wound rolls of one for attacks made with weird weapons to buy this model that targets a hero or monster. So he's just like absolutely slaying any big boys. Um, protect the Admiral is a secondary ability. Do not take battle shot tests for friendly carriage and overlord units while they are within wholly within 12 inches of this model. In addition, roll the dice before you allocate a wound or mortal wound to a friendly Archon or Admiral while this is within 3 inches of any friendly Skyfarer's unit with 5 or more models. On a 5 plus, you must allocate that wound or mortal wound to a friendly Skyfarer's unit with 5 or more models that is within 3 inches of this Arch of that Archon or Admiral instead of that to the Archon or Admiral. What does all that mean? It basically means if you've got a unit within a Skyfarer's unit within 3 inches, you can allocate wounds to them on a 5 plus instead of the character, which is pretty cool. A lot, a lot of words to make sure it's super clear, but in essence, that was what it means. So he has a command ability called Master of the Skies. You can use his command ability at the start of your shooting phase. If you do so, pick one friendly sky vessel that has, that has a model with this command ability in its garrison. That sky vessel can shoot in that phase, even if it ran early in the same turn, which is pretty cool. And then he has another, lots and lots more, three more command abilities, which is pretty cool. On my mark, fire. You can use this command ability at the start of your shooting phase. If you do so, pick one friendly sky vessel that has a model with this command ability in its garrison. You can reroll hit rolls with one for attacks made by that sky vessel in that phase. Um, then he has repel the borders. You can use this command ability at the start of your combat phase. If you do so, pick one friendly sky vessel that has a model with this ability in its garrison. Funny that they're all saying the same thing as while he's like aboard a, <laughs> aboard a um, sky vessel. Uh, add one to hit rolls for attacks made of that sky vessel and any models in his garrison in that same phase. And then up an atom, you can use, use a command ability at the start of the charge phase. If you do so, pick one friendly sky fairy unit that is wholly within 12 of this unit. Um, oh, sorry, within 12 of this friendly model with this command ability. You can reroll charge rolls for that unit in that phase. So basically, you buff up the sky vessel that you're in, or you tell the sky fairies to absolutely get into combat right now. Then we have the Navigator, which is the guy with the cool goggles. This is this boy here. So he's a single model with a Zephyr scope and a ranging pistol. So his ranging pistol is range 15. So a little bit of range. <laughs> uh, two attacks, threes and threes, minus one and one damage. And then he has the Zephyr scope, uh, which is two attacks, threes and fours, and just one damage with no rend. Uh, he has a few abilities. He has other sight. This model can attempt to uh, to dispel one endless spell at the start of your hero phase and attempt to unbind one spell in your in the enemy hero phase in the same manner as a wizard. So he's the guy who's looking, uh, trying to dispel everything. He's like looking into the wizards and not believing they're actually there, but causing them problems. And then they have other storm. Uh, so this is one where you essentially before you can add one to it. You can re-roll it if you take these command abilities, which is really cool. Uh, command traits, sorry. In your hero phase, you can pick one enemy unit within 36 inches of this model and it's visible to them and can fly. And roll a dice. On a 1 or 2, nothing happens. On a 3 to 5, half the movement characteristic of that unit into your next hero phase. On a 6, half the movement characteristic into your next hero phase and that unit suffers D3 multiple wounds. Which is pretty cool. It's interesting because you add one, you can add one to the dice, but it doesn't say on a 6 plus. So I mean, obviously the intention is say if you add one and you roll a 6, which then becomes a 7, you gain this ability. But it doesn't say that, which is interesting. And I noticed that same thing with uh, the Disciples of Zinch. Again, I'm not a massive buff into AOS, but I mean, in 40k it would usually say 6 plus. But, you know, just something I noticed. Um, and then Read the Winds is the final ability. You can re-roll, run and charge rolls for friendly sky vessels that are visible to a friendly Atheric Navigator that has not attempted to use the other storm ability in the same turn. So if you're not doing this, you can make all your other uh, sky vessels a lot faster by letting them re-roll those run rolls and charge. Then you have the Endrin Master with Endrin Harness. Um, he has a Gaze of Grungni and an Athermite Hammer. So the Graves of Gungni is 9 inch 1, 1 attack, 3s and 2s, minus 1 and D3 damage. And then the Athermite Hammer is 3 attacks, 3s and 3s, minus 1 and D3 damage. Uh, his ability, Endrin, Endrin Master, at the start of your hero phase, you can pick one friendly Sky Vessel unit within 1 inch of the model uh, and heal up to D3 wounds. So again, the other guy that you re-roll as well. Uh, his Endrin Harness, if an unmodified hit roll of a 6, made by a melee weapon by this model is a 6, uh, that attack inflicts D3 mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends. So again, that's the same as Brock. So essentially, this is an unnamed Brock. So, by Grungini, they have I have my Iron U, which is the same as the other guy. So basically, they can re-roll uh, the Endring Craft ability um, for how many wounds they would heal. And then you have the Other Chemist. 
he has an atmospheric anatomizer and heavy instruments. So the atom anatomizer is range 9, 3d6 attacks, 4s and 4s, minus 2 and 1 damage. And then the heavy instruments is 2 attacks, 4s and 4s and 1 damage. That's the melee weapon. So he has Atheric, uh, Atheric Augmentation. In your hero phase, you can pick one friendly Skyfarer's unit wholly within 12 inches of this model until your next... <laughs> wholly within 12 inches of this model. Until your next hero phase, you can reroll wound rolls of one for attacks made by that unit. The, this ability cannot be used to make by an other chemist that is part of a garrison or a friendly unit that is part of a garrison. So you can't use it whilst on board a sky vessel, essentially. And then atmospheric isolation. To track one from hit rolls for attacks made by enemy models while they are within three inches of any friendly model with this ability. This ability cannot be used by another chemist that is part of a garrison. So again, it makes much stuff minus one, but you can't use it while he's on board a ship. Because he's too far away. So then you have your normal boys, the Arcanaut Company, which is your run-of-the-mill battle line dudes. Unless you're running a particular um, skyport, then, then you can take other things as, uh, as battle line, which is cool. So, uh, he has any number of models, unless you're playing match play. Each is armed with a privateer pistol and an Arcanaut cutter. Uh, one, every one in every ten can replace those uh, with an automatic volley gun and gun butt. One in every ten can replace those with a light sky hut and gun butt. And one in every ten models can replace their privateer pistol and Arcanaut cutter with a sky pike. So company captain, one model can be the captain. Um, uh, that model is armed with an either flare pistol or volley pistol instead of a privateer pistol. And then their ability is Glory Seekers. You can reroll battle shot tests for this unit while it's wholly within 9 of an objective and add one to hit rolls to attack made by this unit while it's wholly within 9 of this objective. This ability cannot be used if it's, if it's part of a garrison. So you, can't, you don't get that whilst you're aboard a sky vessel, but they really like objectives because they might have gold in them. So they have quite a few weapons that we've just gone through. So you have your Privateer Pistol, which is 9 inch range, 2 attacks, 4s and 4s and 1 damage. And they have the Volley Gun, which is 12 inch range, 6 attacks, 5s and 4s, minus 1 and 1 damage. The Light Sky Hook is 18 inch range, uh, 1 attack, 4s and 3s, minus 2 and D3 damage. And then the other Flare Pistol is 9 inch, 2s, uh, 2 attacks, 4s and 3s and 1 damage. And then the Volley Pistol is 3 attacks, 4s and 4s and 1 damage. The melee weapons are Arcanaut Cutty have range 1, 1 attack, 4s and 4s and 1 damage. Gun Butt is 1 attack, 4s and 5s and 1 damage. And then the Sky Pike is 2 inch range, but 2 attacks, 4s and 4s, minus 1 and D3 damage. So again, they're your basic boys. Um, again, I think they've changed quite a lot since uh, the last book, uh, but they're a little bit cheaper, I believe, as well. So, then you have Jorgen Thundrick uh, and your Thundrick's Profiteer. So these are the guys from Shadespire. So you have to buy these together. Um, but he has an atmospheric anatomizer and the heavy instrument, same as the other guy. Then um, he essentially is very is very similar to the what's he called the chemist. Uh, so he has automatic augmentation. Uh, in your hero phase, you can pick one friendly Skyfarer's unit wholly within 12 inches of this model and not part of a garrison. To your next hero phase, you can reroll hit rolls with one for that unit, and you can't use it while you're part of a garrison. And then you have the automatic isolation. Again, you make stuff minus one to hit whilst you're within three, as long as you're not part of a garrison. Uh, the atomizer, again, 3d6, falls and falls, minus two and one damage, and then three three attacks, falls and falls, and one damage for the heavy instruments. So Thundrix Profiteers is the unit. Again, you have to buy these together, but they act as separate units. Uh, it has a unit of four models. Uh, one of them has got a privateer a pistol and Arcanaut cutter. One of them has got the volley gun and gun butt. One of them has got the other shot rifle and gun butt. And, the, and then the last guy has got the vulcanizer pistol and a sky pike. Um, and the, the sergeant in the squad has two, two wounds. Uh, Kazakh Drak Skewer. Uh, they have Thundrix Profiteers. So you can add one to hit rolls for attacks made by unit, this unit and reroll battle shot test for this unit while they're wholly within nine of Bjorn, Jorgen Thundrick. And it cannot be used as ability while they're part of a garrison. So basically, whilst they're near him, they reroll hit rolls of one and they reroll battle shot tests. And they've got loads of guns which have already gone through because they're on the Arcanaut Company. So then we have the big changes. We have the gunships, the Arcanaut Ironclad. Um, so it has a degrading movement characteristic, which starts at 10 inches. Um, and I should say that as it takes wounds, it loses disengage and fly high. So whilst you've got taken up to six wounds, you should keep those abilities. But when you've taken seven to nine, you lose fly high. And if you've taken 10, you lose disengage as well. So it basically slowly degrades and doesn't quite fly quite as high whilst it has holes in it. So it's got 18 wounds, three up save and braver at eight. Um, it has quite a lot of weapons, which I'll be I'll go through, but I'll go through the abilities first. 
So, an Arcanaut Ironclad single model armed with the other shock carbines, other shock torpedoes, body weapons, and one of the following weapons a great sky cannon, a great sky hook, or a great volley cannon. And all of the, the frigates, all the, the sky vessels have similar weapons, but they're not quite as strong depending on which one you take. So it's a flying transport, so this model can fly and be garrisoned by up to 25 friendly marine models, even though it's not a terrain feature. How this model's movement characteristic, if it cannot fly high, uh, and it cannot fly high, if there are 16 or more models in its garrison, so put too many dudes in, it's way too heavy for it to fly. Units cannot join or leave this model's garrison if it has made a move or flown high in the same phase. They can join or leave before it does so. Models in the garrison are not counted towards gaining control of an objective. An attack made by a weapon that is in range of this model can target either this model or a unit in its garrison. And then, if this model is destroyed before it is removed from play, roll one dice for each model in its garrison. On a one, that model is slain. Set, set up any surviving models wholly within three inches of this model and more than three inches away from any enemy units. So essentially, it can, it can carry dudes. If you put too many, it loses fly high and it slows down. Um, but and also if you are targeted by an attack you can attack either unit that are there either the ship itself or the guys inside which is I suppose is good and bad um, so you have the Atheric Navigator and, and Enrigger um, Endrin Rigger ability <laughs> such a difficult word in your hero phase you can heal one wound allocated to this model in addition you can reroll run rolls for this model so pretty pretty chunky and then it has bomb racks. At the start of the combat phase, you can pick one enemy unit within one inch of this model and roll the dice. Add the bomb rack modifier from this model's damage table to the roll. So whilst you've got no wounds suffered, you add two to it. On a four plus, the enemy unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. So the disengage and fly high are quite cool abilities. So disengage, this model and any models in its garrison can still shoot as long as this, if this model retreats in the same turn, as long as there are no enemy units that can fly within three inch of this model. At the start of the retreat move, and it, and there are less than 10 wounds allocated to this model at the start of the retreat move. So essentially, if you're against something that can't fly and you pull out, you can still shoot, unless that uh, unit can also fly. And obviously, if you're taking too much damage, you lose this ability. And then fly high. Instead of making a normal move with this model, if there are less than 7 wounds currently allocated to this model, you can say that it will fly high. It can retreat and disengage as well. If you do so, remove this model from the battlefield and set it up again more than one inch from any terrain feature or objectives and more than nine inches away from any any enemy models. So it's a shame that you can't land onto objectives, but I mean, being able to redeploy a unit all, every turn is really good. Great Skyhawk is one of the abilities if you take this weapon. You can add two to charge rolls for this model if it's armed with this Great Skyhawk. And the Great Sky Cannon, before attacking with the Great Sky Cannon, choose either the Shrapnel or Shell Missile weapon characteristic for that shooting attack. So depending on which type of gun you take on the front, you have different profile for that one in particular. So, guns. Lots of. <laughs> he has a great sky cannon, two modes of fire. There's a shrapnel fire, which is 24 inch range. Six attacks, threes and threes, minus one or two damage. And then the shell is 30 inch range, one attack, threes and twos, minus two and six damage. The great sky hook has one attack, uh, threes and twos, minus two and six damage also. The Great Volley Cannon uh, has 18 inch range, 46 shots, uh, threes and threes, minus one and one damage. The Other Shock Torpedo is 24 inch, four attacks, fours and threes, minus one D3 damage. And then the Other Shock Carbines is 12 inches, eight attacks, threes and threes, minus one and two damage. And then Boarding Weapons, it starts with eight attacks, fours and fours, mine, no rend and one damage. So that is the Arcanaut Ironclad, that is the largest um, gunboat you can take and then you have the Arcanaut Frigate which has very similar abilities uh, so I'm not going to go through them all uh, but it, the flying transport it can transport 15 models um, and it can it has its move characteristic and loses fly high if there's 11 or more uh, so it can't tr quite transport as many but it is very very similar um, it's a little bit faster it moves 12 it loses um, fly high if you're taking 7 wounds and loses uh, disengage if taking 10 so it's exactly the same um, it has bomb racks ability as a different modifier. That's the only difference. It can still disengage, um, and it can still fly high. And the heavy sky hook and heavy sky cannon are essentially the same as great sky hook and great sky cannon in terms of abilities, but the shooting weapons are slightly different because they're a little bit weaker. So the heavy sky cannon shrapnel version is 24 inch range, D6 attacks, threes and threes minus one and two damage. So essentially, rather than straight six, 
you get d6 and the, th the same is for the shell wet version it's the same it's threes and twos minus two but it's d6 damage rather than straight six and the skyhook is also d6 damage rather than straight six so essentially the same just a little bit smaller it has a four plus save instead of a three plus as well and then we have the gun hauler which is the little boy the little gunship so these have a, a few of the same abilities but also a few new ones which is cool and again, they have the same, I think it's the same weapons as this one. No, it's slightly different weapons, so we'll go through those. So, it can fly, uh, a head full, which is what uh, one of its abilities. Once for battle, let's start your movement phase, you can say that this model will move a head full. Uh, if you do so, add six to that move characteristic of this model in that phase, which is pretty cool. Um, which means you can still run after that as well, but it just makes it a little bit faster. So it goes from movement 12 to movement 18 before you run. Um, escort vessel, roll a dice each time you allocate a wound or mortal wound to a friendly sky vessel other than the gun, Grunstock gun hauler whilst it's within 3 inches of any friendly Grunstock gun haulers. On a 6 that mortal wound is negated which is really good so it really makes those um, um, the ironclads and the frigates really strong because I, I would have thought that this ability it just you'd allocate it to the gun hauler instead but it's just straight up negated which is really good. <coughs> Uh, but you, obviously they can't block each other, which I should make sure that's clear. So they have bomb racks as well. They don't have any modifier to this. It's just on a four plus dates to heat three mortal wounds. They have disengage and fly high. But then they have drill cannon. If an unmodified hit roll for an attack made with the drill cannons of five plus, that attack inflicts three mortal wounds on the target and the attack sequence ends. And then sky cannon. Before attacking with the sky cannon, choose which, which weapon profile you use. So the shrapnel version is 18 inch range, d6 attacks, 3s and 3s, minus 2 and 1 damage. And the shell version is 24 inch range, 1 attack, 3s and 2s, minus 2 and d6 damage. So that's very similar to the frigate. The drill cannon is 36 inch range, 1 attack, 3s and 3s, minus 3 and d3 damage. And the other shot carbine is 12 inch range, 2 attacks, 3s and 4s, minus 1 and 1 damage. And it has boarding weapons, which is 4s and 4s and 1 damage. So they're the, the sky vessels. I think they've got a lot better in my opinion. Uh, but I may be wrong. Uh, I'm happy for you guys to tell me otherwise. Um, but yeah, so then we have the Thunderers, uh, which are the more hardy um, uh, Duardin of the Carriage on Overlords. Um, so they have, um, they are a unit of any number, obviously unless you're playing match play. Each is armed with an other shot rifle and gun butt, so gun butt's just a melee weapon. Uh, one in every five can take a, can replace their other shot rifle with a mortar, one in every five can replace a rifle with an other cannon. One in every five can replace their rifle with a fumigator, and then one in every five can replace their rifle with a deck sweeper. <clears throat> so you have the gunnery sergeant. One model in this unit can be gunnery sergeant. Replace that model's weapons with a double barreled other shot web shot rifle, gun butt, and drill bill. Um, the honor bearer, uh, you can reroll battle shot test while you've got one. And their abilities are choking fog. Um, subtract one from hit rolls for any models for any enemy models within three inches of friendly models armed with an atheratic fumigator. This ability cannot be used by a model that is part of a garrison. Again, so they're getting lots of abilities, but they can't use it while they're on the vessel. Drive them back. Add one to the attack characteristics of missile weapons used by this unit while there are any enemy units within three inches of this unit. They can't use it whilst they're on the garrison. And then the final one, which also can't be used while they're part of the garrison, pin them, shred them, and finish them. Add one to hit rolls for attacks made with Grunstock Mortar, Deck Sweeper, or Other Cannon when it is used by a unit that has at least one of each of these weapons, i.e. at least one Mortar, one Deck Sweeper, and one Other Cannon. So basically, if you, if you mix up all the units and take a big unit, you can uh, add one to the attacks. So the Other Shot Rifle is 18 inch range, 2 attacks, 3s and 4s, minus 1 and 1 damage. The Double Barreled Other Shot Rifle is 18 inch, 4 attacks, 3s and 4s, minus 1 and 1 damage. The Fumigator is 9 inch range, threes, 3 attacks, 3s and 3s, minus 1 and 1 damage. The Deck Sweeper is 12 inch range, 4 attacks, 4s and 4s, minus 1 and 1 damage. The Other Cannon is 12 inch, 1 attack, 4s fours, fours and 2s, minus 2 and 2, D3 damage. Uh, just D3, I think I said 2D3, I apologise. And then the Grunstock Mortar is 12 inch range, 1 attack, 4s and 3s, and then D3 damage. Okay, we're nearly at the end now. We have 2 units left, and then we can go into the points. So we have the Endrin Riggers, which I've been like really confused about with all the abilities, but these guys, I believe, can heal Sky Vessels. Um, okay, so they are a unit that have any number of models. Each is armed with a rapid-fire rivet gun and an automatic saw. 
So the other Mavic saw is again similar to what the Brock has and stuff like that. Um, they can replace the rivet gun and other Mavic saw with a volley gun and gun butt. One in every three can replace their rapid fire rivet gun with one of the following options: drill launch and gun butt, grapnel launch and gun butt, and sky or skyhook and gun butt. So they lose the saw, but they gain a bigger weapon. Uh, they obviously can fly. Uh, the Miser Master is one model looking with Miser Master. Add one to the attack characteristics for them, of that model's melee weapons. So if you have a drill launcher, if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a drill launcher is a six, that attack inflicts three mortal wounds on the target and the attack sequence ends, which is really good. Then Endring Craft, uh, at the start of your hero phase, you could pick one friendly sky vessel within one inch of this unit and roll a dice for each model in this unit. For each roll of a four plus heal one wound allocate to that sky vessel. That's really, really good. I think anyway. So you can just complete if you roll if you've got ten dudes, um you know, roll ten four four ups and you get ten wounds back on a sky vessel. Grapnel launcher. Enemy units cannot retreat if they're within three inches of any enemy models from this unit armed with the grapnel launcher, so you can't get out of combat with them. And they have hitches as well. So they can grab onto a sky vessel before it does its fly high ability and redeploy with it. And then skyhook, add one to charge rolls for this unit if any models from this unit are armed with the skyhook. So I believe the Skyhawks have changed how they work as well. So you just add in one to charge. So the Volley Gun is six attacks, fours and fours, minus one and one damage. The Launcher or Skyhawk uh, is one attack, fours and threes, minus two and three damage. The Drill Launcher is 24 inch, one attack, fours and threes, minus three and D3 damage. And the Rapid Fire Rivet Gun is three attacks, threes and fours, minus one and one damage. The Saw again is three attack, threes and twos, minus two and D3 damage. And the Gun Butt is just fours and fives and just crap. <laughs> Um, and then you have the Sky Wardens. So any number of models, again, unless you play match play. So each is armed with a Vulcanizer pistol and Sky Pike. One in every three can replace the pistol and Sky Pike with a Volley Gun. Uh, one in every three models can replace their Vulcanizer pistol and Sky Pike with one of the following. Drill Launcher Gun Butt, Grapnel Launcher Gun Butt, or Skyhook and Gun Butt. So the Sergeant or the Custodian adds one to attack characteristic for the model's melee weapons. Uh, drill Launch has the same rule. Grapnel Launch has the same rule. They can hitch. They have Skyhook as well, so they add one to charge while you've got Skyhook in the unit. And then Sky Mines. If an enemy unit that can flies, that can fly, ends a charge me within one inch of the friendly unit with this ability. You can roll a dice for each model in that enemy unit. On a, each roll of a six, you suffer more, one mortal wound. Uh, and there's time charges. Roll one dice for each enemy unit that's within three inches of this unit immediately before it makes a retreat move. On a four plus, the unit being rolled four suffers D3 mortal wounds. So basically, they're getting combat and they don't let you go. <laughs> So we've gone through all the weapons of those. They move 12, they've got two wounds as well. So just they're very similar to Endring, Endring Riggers, but they'd act a little bit differently and more combat based. So the Sky Pike uh, is the other one, the other difference. The range two inch, two attacks, fours and threes, minus one and D3 damage. So and that is the all of the war scrolls. So now we have the pitch battle points. Um, so it should say, depending on which Skyport you use, you have different battle line. But otherwise, your basic battle line is Arcanaut Company, size 10 to 40, and they are 90 points per 10. There is no discount um, for taking multiple um, uh, larger units, which is interesting. I noticed that in the Disciples of Zinch as well. Um, the Arcanaut Frigate is a behemoth, uh, but his battle line, if you are Barak Zilfin, um, is one unit and it's 250 points for a frigate. It's 510 points for an Arcanaut Ironclad. The Chemist is 90 points and he's a leader. The Navigator is um, 100 points and he's a leader. The Admiral is 140 points leader. But, uh, Brock Grunson is 240 points and obviously he's a unique leader. Uh, Endrin Master in Dirigible Suits, that's the new guy, he's 220 points. And then the Endrin Master with Endrin Harness is 100 points and they're all leaders. Then you've got the guys from uh, Underworld, so the Jor Jorgen, Thundrick, and Thundrick's Profiteers, 140 points together um, for five dudes, um, and the uh, Thundrick is a leader as well. Uh, you've got Endrin Riggers, that's three, three minimum, up to 12 for 100 points each, and, but they are battle line if your general is an Endrin Master with dir dirigible suit. So if you take the new guy, they are battle line as well. Um, Grunstock Gunhauler is 150 points for one. They are battle line if you are Barak Erbaz. And then Gun Grunstock Thunderers, um, units of five up to a maximum of 20 for 120 points per five. They are battle line if you are Barak Nar. And then Sky Wardens, which are the final ones, three uh, units of three up to 12, 100 points for three. They are battle line if your general is an Endrin Master with dirigible suit.
So basically, you get Endring Riggers and Sky Wardens, the other guys with the hot air balloons. They are battle line if you take him as your, your general. The four battalions, you have Grand Armada, which is 90 points. The Grunstock Escort Wing, which is 140 points. The Iron Sky Attack Squadron, 120 points. And the Iron Sky Command is 130 points. And the allies they can take is Dwarves, 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 or Stormcast. So you have Dispossessed, Fire Slayers, Iron World Arsenal, or Stormcast Eternal. Uh, so they're the points of Karazhan Overlords. And that is everything. So, again, I've never played, uh, I've never read much into um, the Karazhan Overlords. I've never played against them, sadly, because I don't think they've that, been that popular. But I do think, from what I do know, very limited knowledge, as I, as I said, I've played one event, I had three rounds, and I won favourite players. So obviously, I'm very, very competitive. Um, I do think that they've overhauled these massively. I do think the Sky Vessels are a lot more interesting now, rather than just being a big lump of something that just dies straight away. Uh, being able to upgrade them is really cool, and the, the resource management for this army is quite interesting. Um, uh, I'm seeing some of this obvi more obvious synergy, but I do think someone with a little bit more knowledge of this army, or this playstyle, will be able to pull out some really interesting and really cool combos. Um, so if you do know of any, let people know in the comments. Let me know in the comments so we can chat about them. Um, uh, I know Tank's painting this up, up uh, some of this army, which is really cool. I know me and him are going to split one of the new other War box sets. So I'm going to take the Zinch, he's going to take the Overlords. Um, but otherwise, I think that's it. Um, again, apologise for the limited knowledge, I guess. Um, it's a bit, of a, bit, a bit of a letdown on my part. But I do think this army is really cool. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Um, and hopefully if you are starting an army then let me know what your army is going to look like so I can kind of get an idea what I should expect to face because we are here at Hellstone we are expecting to do more we're well, not expecting we are going to be doing more um, Age of Sigmar content throughout 2020 and we are looking at going to more events and uh, trying to handle that because we've done 40k all year really competitively so we're going to try and do the same for Age of Sigmar this year um, but yeah, let me know what you thought of this type of video. If you are, uh, if you liked it, or you are new here and you've used it to look at all the leaks on the day of release, then thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you like and subscribe if you can. It really helps us out, especially the subscribing part. Uh, massive thank you to Games Workshop for letting us review this video and keep, get, kicking us up the arse uh, to start doing Age of Sigma content. So, otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I've been Mike from Hellstorm. You've been fantastic, and hopefully we'll catch you in the next one. See you later.